If you suffer with osteoporosis, with heart issues, or with tooth decay, then this video is definitely for you. Vitamin K2 is one of the most underrated minerals out there, but it has huge benefits to our health. The much more common version is vitamin K1, which helps with blood clotting. But vitamin K2 has massive impacts on our health. And so in this video, I'm gonna go through my top four health benefits and how we can utilize this mineral to get the health effects that we're looking for. Let's begin. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Hume and I'm a chiropractor currently based in the Oxfordshire area. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at vitamin K2. Now, vitamin K comes in two different forms. We've got vitamin K1 and then we've got vitamin K2. In this video, we're gonna be looking more specifically at vitamin K2. Why? Because vitamin K2 is much less available for us to take into our bodies and we tend to take in a lot less because of that. Vitamin K is commonly thought of as the vitamin that really helps with blood cutting, which it, it does. But vitamin K2 has other really important functions and it's harder to get mainly because vitamin K2 is often found more in high fatty animals like beef as well as fermented food like sauerkraut. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the top four benefits of vitamin K2, and by the end of it, you should have an idea whether perhaps this is something that you may want to try or trial taking um, going forwards. So number one, vitamin K2 has a massive role in osteoporosis and preventing fractures. The most common mineral to be given for osteoporosis is calcium. And it makes sense because calcium is in our bones and it's because of the loss of calcium in our bones that we start to develop osteoporosis, which then gives us more fragile bones and more susceptible to fractures and breaking them. Why vitamin K2 is important, and arguably in, in a lot of people, actually vitamin K2 can be more important than calcium, is because vitamin K2 is important for getting that calcium into the right places in your body, and your bone is one of them. If you don't have enough vitamin K2, then you can take as much calcium as you like, but if it's not going to the right places, you're gonna develop problems because of the deposition of calcium in the wrong places of your body. And we're gonna get onto um, that part in a minute. But it also means you're not gonna get enough calcium into the bones, so that can develop into osteoporosis. There have actually been studies in the past that have shown how consistent calcium supplementation can increase your risk of coronary heart disease and other arterial issues because of the increase of calcium, but then the calcium not getting into the right places, so then it clogs up the arteries. A study done on Japanese patients in 2006 actually looked at whether K2 has an impact on osteoporosis. And they did conclude that it reduced the bone loss in Japanese patients and it massively reduced the chances of them getting a fracture. This particular research was a systematic review, which is where they look at a collection of papers to then come to a much better conclusion. So it's very high quality research. And there are also other papers that have looked at this. So the link between K2 and osteoporosis is quite high. And so it looks very likely that K2 will, will massively help with osteoporosis. So if you are suffering with osteoporosis as you get an older, this may be a mineral that you may want to trial. Number two, vitamin K2 can help to prevent the incidence of coronary heart disease. Why? Because the same mechanism that I mentioned for osteoporosis, K2 helps get the calcium into the right places, which means if you don't have enough of it, then the calcium can get into the wrong places and your arteries can be one of them. So if you're taking a lot of calcium or you generally have enough calcium, but you don't have enough uh, of the mineral that's telling where, telling the body where that calcium should get to then you can start to clog up your arteries with more plaque and then that can then develop to arterial um, issues like coronary heart disease so there was a study that looked at this in 2004 in rotterdam and they did find that there was a link between taking vitamin k2 and preventing coronary heart disease number three interestingly enough vitamin k2 can help with tooth decay. Now there hasn't yet been a lot of research on this, so we can't say this to 100%, but the mechanism makes sense because if the K2 is responsible for getting the calcium into the right places, if, that, if it does that for bone, 
then there's a very good chance it's also going to do it for your teeth. This relationship was discovered by a dentist called Weston Price, who traveled the world in the early 20th century and studied the relationship between certain diseases and diets in various different types of populations. And he found that those that were taking a high amount of Activator X had much less chronic diseases and less tooth decay. So if you are someone that does get a lot of tooth decay and you do clean your teeth regularly and you're doing all the things that the dentist is saying, then perhaps um, the absence of this mineral in your body may be contributing to it. So you may want to consider trialing this mineral to see whether it makes a difference or not. Number four then, interestingly, is there are a few studies that have shown for vitamin K2, the intake of it, or having enough levels of K2 can help fight against cancer and prevent cancer. This was shown in a study in 2006 where they looked at the link between K2 and liver cancer, and it did show a positive effect in survival rates and preventing the recurrence of liver cancer. There have also been other studies that looked at prostate cancer and other cancers, but there does seem to be some kind of link between and K2 and cancers. So in conclusion, vitamin K2 has been shown to have positive effects with osteoporosis, with heart issues, with tooth decay and cancers. There are all obviously many other benefits of K2 and lots more research needs to be done to really know more of the effect of it and um, where we can really utilize this, this mineral. But in general, you wanna make sure that you have good levels of it because it does appear to have very good health benefits. So the question is, where can we get this? As I mentioned at the beginning, in an average diet, there appears to be 10 times more of K1 than K2. Now, fortunately, K1 can be converted to K2, but this process does appear to be quite inefficient. So it is important that we are getting enough naturally and we're giving the body some direct um, access to K2. The best foods, as I mentioned at the beginning, is fat, high fatty meats, as well as fermented foods. One of the highest sources of K2 is an oil that is called emu oil. It comes from the emu animal and it's uh, very popular in Australia. It's not a cheap oil, but if you want to take it in the most natural form and you perhaps struggling to get enough of it from fermented foods or from meats, then it is very high in this oil. So you can look at that. I'll put a link in the description of an example of where you can get this. And then lastly, if you are gonna take vitamin K2 in a supplement form, you wanna make sure you're taking it with vitamin D because vitamin D helps the K2 to be absorbed. But as usual, you're always much better to take uh, any minerals like this one in its most natural form, so within a food. That's why by increasing your, your meats, your fermented food, by taking the emu oil it would be much better than just taking a supplement, however, if you um, are, are struggling to get enough in your diet, then the supplement is the second best. But if you are going to take the supplement, make sure you are combining it with vitamin D to make sure you get the maximum uh, amount of absorption. And also make sure you take any, any supplement, you take it with food because you're going to have other things that can help um, that nutrient to absorb better um, because uh, minerals generally don't absorb as well just on their own. Um, that's sometimes the issue with supplements. So I hope that's been useful. Um, again, any questions that you have, feel free to put it down in the comments. I'll put um, a link to the, all the research that I've mentioned in the description if you wanna look more into that and uh, look out for more videos like this one. If you are enjoying this type of content, then please do uh, subscribe um, as I tend to post videos several times a week. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you on my next one. Take care, bye-bye.